Hey friends, a little different scenery than you're used to at the beginning of my videos, but today I wanted to show you how you could take trash and turn it into beautiful decor items for your home. I've also got a ton of questions about where I find my inspiration and how I come up with my ideas, so today I'm going to share a little bit of that with you along the way. Let's get started. Leftover wood from a barn door that I had taken apart and made into some decor boards. I'll insert a picture of those here. So these were some of the pieces I had left. You can tell some of them aren't as wide. This one is completely broken into three separate pieces. It turns out the boards that had the splits in them that I used the old metal trimmings on were the most popular. So I figured it was time to make a few more. This board didn't need to be glued. I just used some Gorilla Wood glue and a basic bar clamp. I applied a thin bead of glue along those splits laid it flat and clamped it tight so it could dry. Next up, we need to give these boards some handles. I am decent at freehand drawing, so I just design a handle on a piece of scrap cardboard you know, I try a couple of different designs and play around with it a bit until I find something I like. Now I trace the stencil onto my board. Notice I'm just doing one side. Taking my piece that has come off the board, this one's split, so that'll make it a little trickier, but it'll be okay. I'm going to flip it to the other side of the board. That way I have my mirror image and my handle is the same shape. And now I will just use my jigsaw and cut out the other side and you can see by using the mirror image both sides match. Make sure that when you're using these power tools you're wearing your goggles and you are using caution. While I knock out the rest of these boards I just wanted to take a second to tell you about Julie. She is the one who has inspired me to become knowledgeable about power tools so I could finally use this old wood. She's got an amazing channel. We have a very similar style. So if you have not seen her channel before, make sure you check it out and subscribe to her as well. I will have it linked down in the description box below. As I was cutting this one, it split right up the middle and I'm not even mad about it. That's gonna add so much character. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one like I did the last one and I'll clamp it up and let it dry um, today while I work on some of the other ones. All four of my boards are cut and I have them laid out here for you to see. And as you can tell, this is not a decor board that you are gonna be able to just go to the store and find in aisle 14. These are super unique and have so much character. What do you think? With my orbital sander and some 40 grit sandpaper, I am wearing down the edges of all of these boards, smoothing them out, making them have a more time-worn feel to them. Now, these are some big old boards. So I busted out these wood bits to make bigger holes than I had on my previous ones. And I really liked the way the, the holes turned out. And these drill bits were really fun to use. <laughs> Okay, now that the messy part is done, I have moved upstairs with the boards. I'm going to be showing you how I do those faux repairs, and then we're gonna add a little bit of greenery onto these boards too. Here is an amazing box full of some metal trimmings I've collected over the past year. Funny story, Chad thought one day that uh, this was a box of trash I was gathering up for him as we were cleaning out the garage, and he was gonna throw it away for me. And all I had to do was give him a look and he realized that he had made a mistake and hasn't suggested anything like that since. I'll be using these pieces today.
Now that I have the repairs done, the silver nails are kind of sticking out like a sore thumb. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my DIY Dark and Decrepit and cover all of the little silver nails. Dark and Decrepit has so many uses, I love it. And it is self-sealing. So once it's on and it's dry, it's not going to come off of these nail heads. If you'd like to try some for yourself, you can find it on my website, upcycledbybree.com, and also in my retail booths. The Dark and Decrepit is all dry on these nails and you can tell they blend in a lot nicer. I ordered some dried lavender off of Amazon and I think tying a few sprigs to the boards makes such a high-end look. Here is a look at the boards all finished up and staged in my kitchen. Didn't they turn out so pretty? I challenge you to learn something new and try something new often. These have become one of my best sellers and one of my favorite decor pieces in my own home. Thanks again, Julie, for the inspiration. From a pile in the garage, to my retail booth in just a few days. Here they are all staged up. All right, I think it's time for a painting project. I found these shutters by the curb. They're dusty, so I'm going to spray them off with some air. That's the easiest way to clean them. And this second pair of shutters are a pair that are going to go into my own home. I'm taking off the old hardware and let's go find something that's a little bit cooler. Bingo! I want to create some amazing texture on these shutters. So I got my salt wash, which is a sea salt additive, and I'm going to mix it up with some DIY layered chocolate, which is a beautiful, rich brown color. My inspiration comes from so many different places. When I was thinking about what I wanted to do with these shutters, I was looking at the things around it. The chippy paint on this old window is where I got the salt wash idea from. And then picking apothecary and petal pusher came from this ice cream bucket I have here on my buffet. I love the rust, I love the blue, and I love the chippy paint. Let's see if we can mimic it. The ratio of salt wash to paint depends on your paint. They always give instructions on the back of the can, but it should be a thick frosting like consistency that forms peaks when you pull your spoon up. This looks great. Let's get it applied. I'm applying the paint with a old chip brush, nothing fancy here, and I'm trying to hit the corners and edges where the shutters would have naturally maybe worn over time. I love DIY for adding great texture, but when I want an authentic looking chippy finish, I reach for my Sweet Pickens milk paint. Today I've got the color Creamy and Pantry Door. Now milk paint is a little harder to mix up. You have to make sure you mix it super well using a one to one ratio of water and powder. And then you see there the Extra Bond, which is an additive that helps the milk paint stick. Since I used wood pieces that were both fairly dry, I just added a tiny touch of the bond. I wanted a little bit of crackling and chipping. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what is going on? This thing is polka dotted and now you're painting over everything you just did. 
stick with me here. There's a method to the madness. I'm gonna go ahead and get just one coat on these shutters. Moving back down into the garage to sand these pieces. I have to bring you in a little bit closer here. So using my orbital and 220 grit, I'm just letting the sander do all the work. And now you see I'm getting the pedal pusher coming through. I'm getting the apothecary coming back through. That salt wash is giving me some amazing texture. These shutters. I'm going to be using my DIY clear wax. It's going to make this job super easy. It is so buttery smooth and easy to apply. I'll be using a chip brush. Nothing fancy here. I'll probably be cramming this in between the shutters and I didn't want to hurt any of my nice brushes. And then today I'll be adding a little bit of dark wax as well. You can find both of these on my website at upcycledbybree.com and in my booths here in Topeka, Kansas. I will have the link to my website and my retail locations in the description box below. So with the wax, I will just dip my brush into this container. I like to keep an empty, spare empty can to work out of. That way I'm not contaminating my whole new can with the color of paint or paint chips when I'm using this milk paint. And I'm just going to apply it evenly. After the clear wax is on, I take a smaller brush and apply the dark wax in just a few spots, making sure I wipe it back with a paper towel. added the old hardware on and now you can see the look all pulled together. The blues, the greens, the chippy paint, and the rust. As I hang these shutters, I just wanted to take a second to tell you about my friend Jasmine. She's the one that has inspired me to play with my paint more and create this amazing texture. I will link her YouTube below. You can check out her videos. She always creates the most amazing finishes. She's also the one who really encouraged me to start my YouTube channel and always sends me helpful tips and tricks when I'm in need. So thank you, Jasmine. I really appreciate it. I am 100% pleased with the way these turned out. What do you think? Is this chippy, textured, rusty look your jam or no? Nah? I'm going to prep and paint this shutter the same way to get it ready for my booth. And speaking of my booth, the last person I wanted to talk about is my ultimate inspiration. Jamie Ray is my business coach. She also does amazing YouTube videos and sells amazing products off of her website and her shop in Utah. So if you have not heard of her, but I'm sure you have, her YouTube channel is also linked in the description box below. Here I'm using the Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Pantry Door, which does look very similar to the DIY Apothecary. And I'm gonna give these shutters one nice thick coat. Once they're dry, it's back down to the garage, and again, using my orbital sander and 220 grit sandpaper, I will let the sander do all of the work over these shutters. This milk paint did a great job of giving me the chippy distressed look I was going for. I'm using my DIY wax and giving it a coat of clear, but now instead of dark, I'm going to be using white wax to distress this piece. I love the mixture of the light green paint with the white wax. And again, I'm just using a paper towel and wiping back the excess. I was sure to stop the with plenty of the white wax 
because I know people are going to fall in love with it once they try it and I have loaded it onto my website as well. I am so happy I saved these shutters from going to the landfill and now I've been able to transform them into beautiful high-end home decor. This is a big set so I will not be shipping these but they are available for $54.95 at my booth here in Topeka, Kansas at the Owl's Nest on Topeka Boulevard. And so as you can see, when people ask me the question, how do you come up with all of this? It's really hard to give them one solid answer. My inspiration comes from so many things, including rusty old buckets, chippy windows, flowers out in the garden, and all the amazing people I've found over the past year. If this video inspired you, and I sure hope it did, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to share it with your friends who might love it as well. And be sure to come back next week where I'm doing a furniture flip for profit, taking this old dresser and turning it into this. Until then, I will see you next time. Bye friends.